So you find yourself with 15 minutes to spend with your horse. Do you know what you're going to do with those 15 minutes? You see, a lot of riders don't. And I think that part of planning and part of, well, being a responsible rider and a trainer for your horse means that you do have a plan for the 15 minutes and the 30 minutes and the hour and beyond. And that's what we're going to talk about today, spending time with your horse. Okay, let's dive in. Hey there, and welcome to the Daily Strides podcast. My name is Lorna Leeson. I'm an equestrian trainer and coach, and I work with riders all over the world to help them make plans. So as their rides, well, they actually mean something and they become stepping stones for the way forward. That's what we're going to talk about today. So I think that part of our job part of our responsibility okay one of the things that we literally sign up to be accountable for when we take on a horse is knowing what we're going to do with the horse and for so many riders and myself hey I'm putting my hand up here because this year has been well let's just say the challenge was real okay but um yeah this year has been a funny one for me but I know that so many riders have the same issue that time is it's limited and the time you have can feel very constricted there's a lot of responsibilities there's a lot of things that you've committed to and just has to be done there's life okay life has to go on and for most people we don't have like four or five hours every day to just be with our horse and if we're not being really really mindful about the time that we do have or the moments that we do have with our horse we can find that at the end of each week we're actually not really moving forward we find that it's kind of the same week over and over and over again it's just on repeat and similarly the same ride is just on repeat as well and it's not really helpful. Now, I do find that there's certain times a year when things go a little, a little wonky with our schedules, okay? They do not follow the normal regular routine. This is one of those, okay? So as I record this, we're entering into December um, 2022. And December for many riders is an up and down month. Some people have loads more time on their hands. Some people have very little time on their hands just depends on the set of circumstances. Also, I find that around April can be similar and then around the end of summer, okay, so as we're getting ready to go back to school can also be a little bit of a challenge for many riders. But what is important is that we are taking note of this and we're actually beginning to come up with ways that we can work with what's going on in a way that we can actually continue to keep moving forward. So I suppose the question that I want to pose today comes down to this. Can you really afford to lose a month of riding and training and working with your horse? Can you afford to lose a month's worth of momentum in your progress with your horse? And if you're saying, no, no, but I have no other choice and da 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 yeah, sometimes things are limited, but a lot of the time it's because we're not really thinking outside the box. And today I want to give you some ideas for that to actually make the most of the time that you do have with your horse so that you can continue to move forward in your training. So the first thing I want to talk about is having 15 minutes or less. Now, for many years, I thought if I had 15 minutes or less, there is no point in going to the stables. (laughs) What could I honestly achieve in 15 minutes or less, okay? Obviously, that was then and this is now. And I know that there's so much I can do in 15 minutes or less, or even just five minutes, okay, with my horse. So, and I think the key when we've only a small amount of time is thinking about what can I take out? So what are the things that I can take out of my usual routine so as I actually get more time with my horse? And my go-to training method or working with my horse method when time is very short, so five to 15 minutes is groundwork because groundwork requires absolute minimal equipment, okay? Like there's no real getting ready required. And groundwork also works if your horse is in the paddock. 
you can just go to the paddock and work with your horse in the paddock. You could go to the stable and work with your horse in the stable. You could take your horse out of the paddock and stable and just work with them outside of the stable door, outside of the gate. It's quick, it's easy, and usually if you just have a head collar and lead rope, you can actually get quite a bit done, okay? So in order to make the most of this now short period of time, it's it's all well and good saying, well, I'm going to do groundwork, but you actually need to have a fairly clear idea about what you want to achieve in that time, okay? So you could work on things such as a square halt, maybe turn on the forehand that remains in rhythm, Mm-hmm. There's a toughie, okay? It could be working over some basic poles for coordination or suppleness. Um, rain back is another one that can be worked on. Moving over, lateral work. There's, there's just so much you can do with your horse in five to 15 minutes if you stop wasting time getting ready. If you accept that things are the way they are, you've got this little piece of time, What can I do with absolute minimal setup time? What can I do? And then begin to use that, begin to do it, okay? So another good question would be to ask yourself, what can I do with my horse while I'm on the ground that will actually move our training forward? So you'll probably find that some of the things I just mentioned would do just that, okay, for you and your horse. Okay, If you find yourself with 15 to 30 minutes, now you've got a little bit more wiggle room, eh? And wiggle room is good. So you could spend that time either going deeper with the groundwork. You could have a 30 minute groundwork session. Of course you can, okay? Or you could spend a little bit of that time in the preparation. And one of the most minimal preparation required tools that you have in your toolkit for training your horse aside from groundwork is lunging okay and that would be one of my go-to things um if i had 15 to 30 minutes now you could also include riding in here but i find that the effort of just going to get the tack and get the tack on the horse can sometimes take 10 to 15 minutes now, now you've cut your whole riding time short, okay? Your bum is just going to be in the saddle when you're going to be getting off again. So I would prefer to focus that time on something that I can do something meaningful. Meaningful would be either groundwork, as we've already spoken about, or the lunging, okay? Now, what I would also suggest with the lunging is to do a little bit of groundwork as well, okay? And also, just like the groundwork, have a clear focus for the session, okay? You need to make sure that you're not just chasing your horse around in the circle, that you are going to be very clear on what you're doing. And if you could combine, let's say, seven to 10 minutes of groundwork with then maybe 10 to 15 minutes of lunging, well, you've done a full like work session with your horse. That's close to 30 minutes of focused, intentional conversation between you and your horse, and that is gonna move things forward. And if you follow just that little timeline, You'll also have five minutes for just hugging and telling your horse how amazing he is as well. And hey, we all want to do that. Okay, so let's go on to the next circumstance that you might find yourself in with your horse. You've got 30 minutes to an hour. Well, now you are like, this is good. You're made. You're golden. Okay, if you get this, I'm going to suggest at this point riding. And of course, you could couple the riding with some groundwork or you could take the time to maybe spend some time just with your horse before you ride. I like thinking that the grooming and everything can become part of your groundwork. I I do think it's groundwork. Okay, but again, If you don't have intention behind it, it's not going to mean anything. Whereas when you're intentional with it, you can move things forward. But yeah, having 30 minutes um, to an hour is going to allow you to get so much more done. But I do want to stress here that if you have, let's say, you find yourself with 35 minutes, I sometimes think that if we are riding, okay, for those 35 minutes, it can feel a little rushed little stress. Now, if somebody has the horse in for you and if your tack is all ready, it's doable. But uh, I don't know. I just find that when we're trying to show up as the model for our horse of what we want our horse to be, if we want to kind of be in this situation where we want our horses to come and align with us, okay, we want to say, hey, I'm over here feeling cool as a cucumber. Come here and be with me. And meanwhile, we're actually stressed out and worried about time. 
not going to work. Okay. So I'm going to suggest that you make sure you do have enough time. Okay. To tack up and untack and warm up and cool off and actually do the bit of writing in between. Okay. So depending on the length of time I have, I would focus on something really relevant. And as I said, make sure you're allowing the time to warm up and cool off. It's really, really important. Okay. If I wanted to work on canter or jumping, I would reserve those for days where I have the full hour. Um, I find that if I've like maybe 35 to 40 minutes, something more basic like trotting or lateral work will actually fit in better. It requires less warming up and less cooling down. So it's important to have all these things and to keep them in your mind, like keep them as part of the planning process that that you're not going to get there and go, oh, sugar, I'm not going to be able to fit this in or whatever the case is. Okay. Really, really important. And then for those special days, special, special days where you find yourself with over an hour. Okay. Well, then you've got all the time in the world, don't you? Uh, Kind of, sort of. But these are the days that if I see that, yes. Okay. Looking ahead, let's say on Tuesday morning, I'm going to have three hours. They're the days I reserve to do maybe some washing if I want to bathe my horse, or it might be some body work with my horse. It could be a long hack or trail or outride, whatever you want to call it, getting out of the arena, all those things. And I find that I can enjoy being with the horse more when I reserve those things to the days where I do have that time. I find that if I was trying to tackle those things where the time was feeling a little short, it's going to leave everybody feeling a little bit frustrated, a little bit stressed. And so that is not going to work as well. What is important here is that if you're going to make the most of the time and whether the upcoming month or whenever you're listening to this you're going to find yourself with more or less time in the saddle in order to make the most of it you are going to have to think ahead a little and have a little bit of a plan in place and that's what I'm going to encourage you to do this week to sit down and to think about what you can do in order to make the most of the time you have with your horse Um, Okay, so I am going to leave it here for the week. I do want to let you know that we are going to be taking a break over the Christmas period um, with the Daily Strides podcast. We will be back in January. I will see you then. I do hope that you have a wonderful, blessed and happy time with your family, your friends, with your horse. Okay, and that it really and truly is special and that you're ready to go. You're, You're already making those plans for next year and um, you're feeling good about it as well. Okay, I'm going to leave it at that. I will chat to you in the new year. Be good. Bye.